The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Power Trading Hour with your host, David White. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648 or internationally at 727-873-7618. Now, David White. And welcome all to another exciting edition of the Power Trading Hour. Uh, as we left uh, you 23 hours ago, uh, we're within about uh, three or four points on the S&P cash. Uh, I guess yesterday afternoon, um, someone dropped a uh, baby Ruth in the punch bowl, and we had a little bit of circle. I continue to see options firm up around this area and think that we're going to have some sideways action. Generally, sideways action is good for commodities, at least action in the commodities, not bearish or bullish. But generally, when not much is going on in the uh, bigger indexes, and hard to say that uh, we're not going anywhere with a 70-point bounce today. But I have a feeling, like I said yesterday, that we're kind of homing in on that 4,600 area for a while and going to have to consolidate out. I expect that the volatility will start to drop over the next few days. Then we'll get into options expiration starting on next Wednesday. Um, and uh, that uh, the whole cycle starts all over again. Anyway, uh, as always, it doesn't matter where you're at as long as you're here at this time. The following takes place between 2 p.m. and 3 p.m. So, <clears throat> had a lot of volume, had a lot of uh, additional shorts. Uh, they got everybody all uh, breathing hot and heavy on the high side. Uh, they tried to wash uh, everybody out at the low side twice. Uh, generally, the... Uh, that kind of action just leads to sideways action on the indexes. So I would home in on sectors and probably not even sectors, but individual stocks themselves. And uh, eh, that's what we got to say. Anyway, so far today, uh, just back to where we were at this time yesterday. Um, again, every time... Uh, uh, the government talks about uh, spend another two, four, five, six, seven, eight hundred trillion dollars. Uh, the market tanks, tanks fairly quickly. Um, unclear though, we got a lot of cash coming in from the uh, uh, from the Fed still. Um, still wondering where that taper is. Uh, don't see a lot. Uh, TLT uh, for today tried to break out once again on the high side. Did fail, got to to, to 152.99 uh, earlier today, and now back. Uh, Tim Ord is on in the next segment, so if you uh, want to call in, that's at 877-927-6648. And uh, make sure and give the uh, engineer uh, the ticker you want to look at, because uh, we'll have them, he'll have, uh, or we'll have him look at those during the breaks. Uh, he's uh, not a kind of an on-the-fly kind of guy. He needs a few minutes to look at stuff. So we'll give him that during the breaks. We already have a couple of people asking uh, about some different stocks, so we'll try to get to that. He's got four charts today. Uh, we're going to talk a lot about bottoming signals. Uh, as I said earlier um, yesterday, that a low, he would repeat this uh, as a mantra, a low is not a low until it's been retested. And uh, that's what we look. We got a retest. We got a retest of the retest. And now the question is, where do we go from here? But pretty stiff resistance right above these levels, at least in the S&P cash. Uh, and uh, the question is, are things getting a little better or getting worse? Uh, was this all a plan just to scare the bejesus out of everybody? Uh, don't know. But uh, we'll find out. I, as I said, from looking at charts and options, uh, mostly looking rather flat uh, for the next week. Although um, I've put on some uh, new positions uh, today uh, in the commodities sector. As I said earlier uh, in the monologue, I always wanted to have my own monologue. Anyway, I have an internal monologue. But uh, mostly it's words that I can't say on the radio. Uh, anyway, that uh, internal monologue is all about how 
commodities tend to do well when the markets go sideways. And conditions are right for lower volatility going ahead. Uh, somewhere around 4,600, I think, is where we want to uh, go out uh, tomorrow uh, on the S&P. At least that's what options look like at about uh, 1230 today. So we'll continue to keep a good eye on that. Um, let's do a little history. We'll get that out of the way. And uh, then we'll come back with Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. And uh, your questions and his charts uh, right after this. Then it's all just a little bit of history repeating. On this day in 2001, the Enron Corporation files for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection in a New York court, sparking one of the largest corporate scandals in U.S. history. As prices fell, Lay sold large amounts of Enron stock while simultaneously encouraging Enron employees to buy more shares on the way down, assuring them that this uh, was the company on the rebound. Employees saw the retirement savings accounts wiped out as Enron stock price continued to plummet after another energy company, Dynergy, canceled plans for an $8.4 million buyout when they found out it was a house of cards. Enron filed for bankruptcy. And, of course, uh, the rest is rather history. Uh, of the uh, folks prosecuted, uh, the King Cheese CEO uh, died within two months of getting uh, convicted, although he had a second trial on appeal coming up anyway. Uh, that was vacated. Uh, the, but, uh, and, you know, these guys sold, uh, I think, around, I want to say, it was in the tens of billions of dollars of stock before it all started circling the, the, glo uh, the drain. I always love that, uh, that the uh, TV series uh, about hackers a few years ago was all about uh, the big company. And, of course, they had the Enron E out in front of uh, the company. What was it? Now I can't even remember the name of that show, but it was great. It wasn't hackers. Uh, I'm losing my mind in my old age. But uh, great movie, a uh, great series anyway, at least the first year. Second year, they screwed the uh, screwed the viewers over. And uh, he never really recovered from that. But maybe the best first year of any series. Does anybody in the den remember it? The guy that uh, later came out to play uh, uh, Freddie Mercury. And uh, the evil dude in the last uh, James Bond movie. The Egyptian kid. Although now he's older. Uh, but uh, that's kind of it. Anyway, when we get back, we'll look at it. We're up 71 points on the S&P Cash. Dow's up 676. NASDAQ up 112. Russell's up 53. Crude oil's up 74. And again, what do we have here? Gold is down 19. So we've got that. We've got Tim Ord of the Ord-Oracle.com. And uh, that's pretty much it. We'll be back in a minute with the aforementioned Tim Ord. Are you grinding in the market, but seeing little to no return? Or are you a successful trader, simply looking to make your job a little easier? Learn to take the path of least resistance with David White's powerful trading newsletter. David White is an accomplished trader whose deep understanding of technology and the markets allows him to consistently find and share winning trades. Support and resistance define the ranges in which stocks trade. By understanding these trading ranges, David White is able to find the path of least resistance. David White's trading newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, is delivered daily before the markets open to make every trading day an easy win. Visit TFNN.com today and subscribe to David White's Ultimate Trading Newsletter for $119 a month and try all of our newsletters risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee. Take the path of least resistance at TFNN, educating investors.
What's separating you from the most successful men and women on Wall Street? That's right, information. Having all the information gives us the perspective we need to place the right trades at the right time. The TAS Profile Scanner is the premier market profile-based scanner. Powered by its acclaimed TAS proprietary algorithms, this feature-rich scanner instantly filters over 2,500-plus global financial markets, such as stocks, ETFs, commodities, futures, and Forex. This powerful suite of tools leverages instant trade filtering and strategy formulation to show you emerging trades before they happen. For a limited time, you can save $100 off your first month by using the promo code UPGRADE. And you still get a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have nothing to risk. Level the playing field with the TAS Profile Scanner, which you can find under the Services tab at TFNN.com. Sign up today. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. As we return, and try to have every two weeks, uh, Tim Ord on the line. We've got him on here today. Tim Ward, of course, been writing a newsletter over 30 years, uh, written a book, The Secret Science of Price and Volume, available on Amazon, and uh, won many awards for Timer of the Year. Welcome back, Tim. Yep, uh, thanks for having me on again. So uh, kind of interesting times here in the market. Um, uh, actually, I, I we can actually get right to the charts if you want to. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, you know, this is a uh, go to chart one, and uh, this is a pretty this kind of tells the story of what's going to happen next. Anyhow, uh, the market uh, over the last I don't know, a couple three days, uh, but the second window down from the top is the SP 500 advancing issues minus declining issues. And uh, when the market all dumps, you know, really hard, uh, this uh, this advancing issues, my declining issues, will get down below 80%. And we hit that a lot, or over the last couple of days or last three days or so. We hit it, and that kind of indicates an oversold market. And uh, the the uh, red vertical lines show when those times happen. And in most cases, you're right near or right at a bottom. And what's important now um, is how this market rallies off of this bottom. Uh, in healthy markets, this will go from merely minus 80% up to plus 80%. If it does that, that suggests intermediate term-wise, the market should keep on going. And so since we pretty much still oversold on a short-term basis here, this next rally will, will kind of tell a story of uh, how strong the market really is. If it fails to get above 80%, that will be an intermediate term warning sign that the that the market may be making some sort of a peak. Uh, so it's kind of important here how this goes. If you notice back in um, that September high of this year, uh, you notice the uh, it never got above plus 80%, and that was kind of a peak. The market went down pretty good after that. Uh, so uh, the market can hit a new high here, but also we like to see the advanced decline hit uh, 80%. In other words, 80% of the 
issues in the S&P 500 uh, were up. So we'll see how this rally goes. We did get along here a couple of days ago, not yesterday. Yesterday been better. But we got along, uh, uh, what's today, Thursday, be uh, Tuesday we got along. Uh, so uh, we got along on the close. And we're still holding that long. We think the market is pretty oversold here. And seasonality is favorable for the rest of the month. Actually, this month is probably seasonality-wise is one of the best months of the year. So uh, probably not going to get a crash this month. And But depends how this month performs going into January. If we, if we do make a new high and the uh, uh, advanced minus declines fail to get above 80%, uh, that could uh, point to a down January. Um, then from there, we'll have to see what goes on from there. So it'll be interesting how this rally performs over the uh, coming weeks here. So well, I thought that you was always important. Said, yeah. Out. When uh, I was getting started, you always said a low isn't low unless it's been retested. <laughs> Does yesterday's low need to be retested? Uh, well, if, if, you, if you look at uh, yesterday's low and you can, uh, and compare the volume to the previous day's low, which was Tuesday's low, uh, yesterday we broke a new low, but volume shrank over 10%. So, and even though that low was, you know, uh, Tuesday's low was exceeded by uh, by quite a bit, over a percent, I think it was, um, I don't think we're going to go back down and, and, and test uh, yesterday's low because it broke the previous low in lighter, 10%, at least 10% lighter volume. So if we close above the previous low, which today we need to close above, I think, what, 44 I'm looking at the SPYs here. It looks like about 45, 55 area. We close above that. That would suggest if you can't hold below the previous lows, you'll attempt to take out the previous highs. And the previous highs, I think, was what, Monday's high? So that would yeah. be an upside target. So, and how is that tested? We'll determine what kind of, you know, stair step we go higher or we, if we don't have the volume to get through it, then then that could uh, flip us in at least a, a trading range. There's another interesting thing, too. Uh, market tops, you know, big tops, don't really form until there's at least a 5% correction before uh, the final tops. And I think September, didn't we have a 5% correction or something? September down to the October low. Um, so if that was a 5%, I'd... I meant to do that before I came on today, but normally market tops just don't see a a thirty uh, percent decline. The army is the first top that kind of weakens the market first before it makes its final top. And so back in September, I think we did have a five percent correction. So this top here has the potential to make a bigger uh, bigger top form because we've already seen a five percent. The next one could be bigger than that, even though we may be fine this month. Um, I'm starting to see January could be a down month is what I'm saying. Yeah. Uh, so um, that may change. Uh, depends how strong this rally goes. Again, if we get the advanced declines up to plus 80% here in the next few days, then uh, that would suggest the market has enough energy to push higher you know, into January and maybe beyond. If we fail to get above that 80% threshold, then... Um, and even though we make new highs, uh, that would still suggest that the market doesn't have a lot of strength to keep pushing forward. So it'll be interesting over the next 30 days what goes on here. But uh, I, I still think uh, December will probably be an up month. There's a good chance we could probably break new highs. Um, and it depends on the strength of the new, new highs, what will determine what may happen next. So, Okay. Do you have we'll a... You have a piece of paper there? I do. We've got some requests, uh, and I figured that during the breaks, maybe you can start taking a look at some of these. And uh, right. as we have time, we've got uh, three more charts of yours to go through. Uh, but we see the uh, first one here is Nike, NKE. NKE, all right. Yeah, and then uh, wants to take a look at natural gas, which is UNG. Okay. And see what else do we have out here? Anybody else? I know there was a couple of them out here. Um, 
Yeah, I'll find the rest of them. There's at least two of them no. um, for us to look at. We'll try to intersperse those in the rest of your charts when we come back okay. from uh, our break here in about two and a half minutes. Uh, when we look at the market out here, uh, kind of banging back up at the resistance we saw yesterday, up 74 points on the S&P cash. Let me update that just to make sure. Uh, to the, up 71s, excuse me. Uh, Dow's up uh, 679, Nasdaq's up 118, Russell's up 57, crude oil up 54, gold down 18. We'll be back in a minute. Having fun trading the markets, but having trouble finding like-minded individuals to discuss your trading and investment ideas with? Become an apex predator in the trading markets and join the Tiger's Den Trading Room only at TFNN.com. The Tiger's Den is an exclusive trading room where successful traders from around the world come to exchange trades and ideas. Join the den and surround yourself with the sharpest minds in the trading world. Subscribers to the Tiger's Den are also the first to have their questions answered live on air and can privately chat with our TFNN hosts live during their shows. Interact with other tigers and tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day. Subscribe to the Tiger's Den risk-free with our 30-day money-back guarantee and become part of the TFNN trading community. TFNN, educating investors. You could be making money off the stock market. And if you're already making money off the stock market, you could be making a lot more. Check out TFNN and Tiger TV and get expert investing advice to give you the power to control your financial future. Go to TFNN.com and find the newsletter for you. Whether you're into trading gold, metals, futures, currencies, or options, you'll get advice and analysis to help you seriously get ahead. TFNN also features trading services with a 30-day money-back guarantee for new subscribers, as well as TFNN's Tiger Den Trading Room, trading software, and educational web webinars for all trading levels. And make sure you check out Tiger TV for free on TFNN.com or TFNN's YouTube channel for live financial content from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern on market days. Stop watching on the sidelines while other people get rich and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. As we return, uh, market still kind of hovering around this. Uh, uh, 4591 I'm looking just like I was yesterday for a close around 4600 on the S&P cash back with uh, Tim Ord of the ord-oracle.com and uh are we finished with uh, chart number 1 Yep yeah we can uh, move on to chart uh, uh 2 Okay um, we can go over that briefly all this is um the top window is the 10 day average of the trend uh the bottom 
window is a three-day average. The next window up from the bottom is a two-day average. And the window above that is a five-day average. So you got a two-day average all the way up to a five-day average of the trend. And when you get all of them in bullish territories, which is uh, on the on the 10-day trend is like 1.2, we're at 1.28. And if you get it on the five-day trend, you get above, uh, uh, it looks like about 1.3, we're at 1.49. On the two-day trend, uh, it's above 1.5, we're at 1.88. And on the two-day trend, it's above 1.5, we're at uh, 1.65. Uh, normally, when this, when these trends, all, you know, the two, two day to three day, five day, and ten day are all in bullish territory. Usually, the markets associated, the markets uh, sold off enough uh, intermediate term wise that the rally can continue. And a lot of times, if you get these readings while the market's going up, it usually goes up higher. If you look back in. Uh, First part of November here, uh, even though the market was an uptrend, uh, all those uh, averages of the trend were actually in bullish territory. And actually, I added uh, to my position a long position because of that, and the market finally went higher over the next couple of weeks. And same thing happened back in August of uh, last year. You know, it was an uptrend, but all the uh, arms index all got back into bullish territory, suggesting the trend should continue. So it works pretty good um, to find out um, when when the trends, all the average trends are in bullish territory, it usually continues. If you notice right now, all the trends right now are in bullish territory also. And usually they, they don't proceed in any big decline. So uh, time frame-wise, we're uh, in a good time where the market's probably going to rally over the next month, maybe two months. And um, and uh, it depends, you know, if the trend gets real low, it would be a sign. Uh, when the average trends get, you know, say, all of them get below one, that's usually kind of a bad sign for the market. It doesn't really have energy to push higher. A lot of times they can turn into tops. But uh, in our case right now, this is, for the next several weeks anyhow, this looks like a pretty good sign that in general this market's probably going to move higher so just one point that's how that's one way i use the trend there's several different other ways but when the trend's above you know 1.5 normally that means there's more volume on the declining stocks than the up stocks and you would think that would be bearish but it's not <laughs> so it's the other way around so anyhow that's pretty much all i have to say on the trend this is kind of a, a intermediate term uh, signal uh, suggests there's probably uh, the selling's probably done and at least a, a, a multi-week rally is probably just about ready to begin if it hasn't already begun. So it's kind of a good indicator for a little bit longer time frames. It doesn't go out very far, but it, it gives kind of an all clear for the next maybe 30 days or so. So You want to take, and you want to take one of those charts or the, one of the uh, companies that... Uh, we had one of our uh, listeners call in on about right here. Yeah, Nike. I, I'm looking at Nike right here. And, and this last correction, I was looking on the weekly because uh, the, the market's kind of been really choppy here for the last couple of weeks. But from the low of uh, of, of June there uh, to the high of the recent high we just had here in, in November, and the market retraced going into that looks like about the October low, uh, uh, 61.8%. Excuse me. And that always kind of worries me. It's not a perfect indicator, but uh, if the market's kind of flying high, which this one was, because that last uh, consolidation that started in, you know, basically uh, January of uh, 2021 and looked like, you know, kind of went sideways into June of 2021, I was real bullish because it didn't retrace anything. It, it pretty much went sideways and kind of have an explosion up. Then, um, then the explosion up led to a 61.8 percent retracement. Now we're hitting new highs. Um, or we're at the previous highs of uh, looks like uh, August there, and the market's kind of having a, a trading range develop here. 
so this is not ideal. I'll put it that way. You don't like to see a, a market retrace 61.8 percent of this previous uh, previous rally. So um, Bollinger Bands are starting to squeeze here. Uh, so this pattern, if it holds up here, um, it's, it's hard to say if it's going to hold above the previous highs and push higher. Uh, but the market's having uh, some highs here, or have it, it's having tested the previous highs and it's not really punched through it. To get through a previous high, you should see a sign of strength. If you notice the volume at the previous, as the test is previous highs, it's kind of lacklustering. So you have a 61.8% retracement, which is not good, and you're not really having a sign of strength through the previous highs. Uh, so, you know, you need more development, I guess, to really make a decision. But uh, if you had to stop on this position, I'd definitely leave that stop on. But you okay. don't want to see a retracement here uh, of this previous rally from the, the recent low in, in October there. Uh, of, of another 61.8%. If you do that again, then the whole thing turns in three drives to the top pattern, and that could spin a, a tell some trouble. But we're not seeing a sign of strength, and uh, the last uh, leg down was kind of deep against the previous leg up. So, you know, it's, it's, to me, it's not a buy. The Bollinger Bands also on the weeklies are starting to pinch here, too, so it's getting ready to do a move. It may just be more sideways consolidation, Probably to year end is what I'm thinking. Okay, because um, we're not we got about a minute and a half. We got so. about a minute and a half left. U uh, and G natural gas. Uh, I don't think we've. You know, it looks like so we're making. Uh, but it. Give me one second to pull it, pull it up. Here it is. All right. I went back and looked at a monthly chart, and Bollinger Bands are starting to squeeze, and he had his sign of strength on the monthly chart this last high, but also it was kind of a buying climax. And he had another kind of a selling climax where he had big volume jumps. So the market's getting to do something. I don't think we've turned the corner to the upside, but at least we're probably starting a base period here. And I think it's, the decline's kind of done, but I don't think the uptrend's really started yet. I think more or less we're going to go sideways here. Um, okay. That's how I'm viewing it. So We'll be back in a minute. we got a couple more charts to look at with uh, Tim, and of course one of those being gold. So everybody's waiting for that. We'll be back in a minute. Are you in the market for buying or selling real estate in the Bay Area, including the surrounding St. Petersburg, Tampa, and Clearwater markets? Tiger Real Estate LLC is a firm that has extensive experience in the Tampa Bay Area. Whether you're looking to sell your current property for maximum value, or you're in the market for a second home or investment property, Tiger Realty has the experience across all areas of real estate in the Tampa Bay area to help buyers and sellers make the most informed decisions across all price levels. From the price you should be paying per square foot in certain up and coming areas to the type of cash flow investment properties are capable of creating, Tiger Real Estate can help you make the best decision when it comes to all areas of the market. Before you make one of the biggest decisions of your financial future, call Tiger Real Estate LA. LC today at 727-329-8322 or email us at tiger at tfnn.com. That's 727-329-8322. Call us today. The technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. 
Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Are China A shares hot or not? If you trade China A shares, now may be time to take a closer look. Trade CHAU or CHAD, Directions Daily CSI 300 China A share bull and bear ETFs. China A shares in either direction. Visit directioninvestments.com today. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risks, charges, and expenses of the direction shares carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about direction shares. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact direction shares at 866-476-7523. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors, such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Come back to the break. Uh, we've got Tim Ward on. We're talking stocks today, as usual. Uh, we're going to go to chart three. Anybody After that wants yet. these charts, hang uh, on a second. <laughs> Anybody that wants these charts can email me at pathtfnn.com. And while Tim is talking, I'll be uh, sending them out as quickly as I can. So you can look at them at all the high resolution that they originally had. Go ahead, Tim. All right. Let's, 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 uh, let's, let's do a chart four first. Okay. Um, and it, you, cause it'll, it'll, it'll flow a little bit better. Go ahead. All right. So uh, this this chart, this is actually a, conti a continuous contract for gold. The chart, uh, what I'm thinking is probably, but in my view, this is what uh, what's happening here is the head and shoulders bottom. And the May or the March April period was the head, and we're screwing around with the right shoulder right now. And this uh, consolidation, I'm calling, it, even though it did go down, pretty much it was kind of a sideways move, and it peaked back in August 2020. So uh, head and shoulders patterns usually are real symmetric, both in time and price. And a lot of times, if the right shoulder looks similar to the left shoulder, it gives more credibility to the pattern uh, to to the head and shoulders pattern. And also there's a lot of symmetry in time. In other words, the left shoulder, a lot of times are equal in time to the right shoulder. Now I have a, a cycle there, that that blue um, oh, cycle lines. In other words, they took the uh, August and cycled it to where it may end. And in pretty close in time right now, that the left shoulder is pretty much equal to the right shoulder. So time-wise, we're pretty good uh, for I think a breakout of this head and shoulders. And if you go down right below the chart, you'll see a slow stochastic. And this is an uh, this is a, uh, um, a weekly uh, time frame here. So the stochastic is oversold on the weekly, and it's just starting to bend. Uh, will it bend up? Don't know. It hasn't yet. Uh, but we're, I think we're in a critical area right here, uh, pretty much um, right now. There's a lot of symmetry. Everything kind of is lining up here. Momentum rules all indicators. And if momentum's going up, it'll trump all of the other indicators that are bearish. But it hasn't turned up yet. And so, anyhow, there's a lot of symmetry here. Uh, the trend, the neckline comes in around uh, 1850. Uh, so, to get through that trend line, you, you will need a sign of strength, which is basically a, a high volume, high price fast move through that line. If that happens, that will be a confirmation that this indeed a head and shoulders bottom, and you had a sign of strength through the neckline confirming the whole pattern. Uh, so that hasn't happened yet either. But we're, we're getting signs here that may not be too far away. Um, that's where now you flip to the next chart, which is chart number three, is a monthly chart. Um, and this chart goes back to 2018. And uh, do you have time to pull, put that one up yet? It's already up. 
Okay. Uh, anyhow, I did a Fibonacci retracement level from the 2018 low and took it to the uh, August 2020 high. The market pretty much only retraced uh, 31.8% retracement of that big move. That was a big move over a you know, two-and-a-half-year period or two-year period. And it's just really hanging strong. The more a market retraces, the more weaker it is. And normally a normal retracement is 50% and kind of a, 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 a when a market retraces 61.8%, kind of shows the market's in a weak position. Well, this one's holding around 31.8%, showing it's a strong position. And uh, go down right below the volume chart here. This is the monthly chart now. And the monthly slow stochastic actually has turned up. So you got the weekly turning, and you got the monthly already turned up. And again, momentum rules everything. And uh, so you, you go along, with, especially on the monthly charts. Momentum's up, so this chart's in a bullish position on the monthly time frames. It's only retrace uh, thirty-one eight point eight percent retracement, and the monthly slow stochastics already turned up. So. Again, you should see a sign of strength through the 1850 area. That's where that neckline lies. And um, a lot of times, if the market only traces uh, 31.8% retracement, a lot of times that marks the halfway point of the move. Uh, so, so we're at the halfway point right now. So you add that on to where. Uh, so anyhow, you come up, uh, you know, in the uh, 20, I don't know. I, I haven't done that calculation recently. I forgot what it was, but. This right now, if this uh, tech analysis works out like it's supposed to, we're at the halfway point of the next move up. So it's quite a substantial rally to come. Uh, so when we got the you know the the coronavirus, uh, the virus out there, we got uh, China starting to have a little bit of conflict. So with a strong gold market, usually when that happens, you got conflicts in the world. So um, that could be kind of bearish for the market and actually bullish for a lot of these gold issues what seems to be happening here so but anyhow that's a that's a two-step uh you know for the weeklies showing a, a, a decent symmetric uh, head and shoulders bottom forming and the cycles are pretty much lined up uh this is a monthly chart the cycles have turned up so i think the rally if it does come i think it, it should show its face you know, my opinion, before the year's out, which is only the next 30 days, so we'll see. Today, it ain't doing anything uh, worthwhile, but uh, more, mostly when these breakouts occur, uh, most of the time, they're they're not anticipated. If they are anticipated, probably the breakout will fail. Will fail. Uh, if it isn't anticipated and everybody's surprised, usually that's when the rally will continue. And it's kind of lined up there because nobody... Um, there's a sentiment indicator for gold called the uh, daily uh, sentiment index, and it's at extremely low levels uh, right now. It's been there for about the last 30 days. And so everybody's kind of bored with gold or given up on it, and that's usually a good sign here midterm. So um, that's my opinion on gold. <laughs> so. Okay. <laughs> uh, when we come back, uh, we've got a bunch of charts we won't be able to get to but uh we'll probably do the last segment which is only two minutes long so we'll have to be brief but why don't you uh take a look at the chart of the smh that's the semiconductors and we'll handle that when we do return with tim order the or dash oracle.com author what of was that uh, symbol again what was that symbol uh, again? smh sam, sam mary howard all right We'll do. Anyway, author of The Secret Science of Price and Volume. Uh, and uh, as we go to break here, up uh, 68 points on the S&P Cash. Dow's up uh, 656. NASDAQ's up 111. Russell's up 61. Crude's up a buck 46 now. Uh, gold's down 1760. And uh, eh, I never bring up Bitcoin. Well, what's that thing doing? Yeah, down 906 bucks. Be back in a minute.
Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com educating investors. Are you looking for a secured investment which pays you on a monthly basis? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be the program for you. The best rate on a five-year CD in the country right now, according to Bankrate.com, is paying 1% per year or $1,000 per $100,000 invested. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year, paid monthly, on secured, high-value, buildable properties in St. Petersburg, Florida. The investment is for four years, paying 7% per year or $7,000 per $100,000 invested. Your investment is secured by high-value real estate in St. Petersburg, Florida. Your investment can be anywhere from $100,000 to $500,000. Do you want to make $1,000 per year on $100,000 invested or $7,000 per year on a secured Tiger First Mortgage? The Tiger First Mortgage Program may be just the program for you. The Tiger First Mortgage Program pays 7% per year paid monthly. For more information, you can call 877-518-9190. That's 877-518-9190. Catch Tom O'Brien, professional trader and educator, founder of TFNN, also a special guest on CNBC. Tom will bisect and dissect the markets. The Tom O'Brien Show, next on TFNN. And as we wrap the show up, uh, we've got Tim Ord in uh, less than two minutes. So why don't we take a look at the SMHs, Tim? All right, uh, I pulled it up. I look, I look at the kind of the bigger chart, trying to figure out where we are. And I noticed over the years, when you do a this is a weekly chart, when you do a fifty day moving average, um, and put on SMH, and the market gets above twenty percent of that fifty day moving average, usually it's kind of a means of short term exhaustion move. And I just did the statistics on this one, and it's around eighteen percent. You had a kind of a big surge up and got away with that uh, 50-day line. And, you know, if it stays fairly close to it, that's usually a good sign. Is It's not not going up too fast, not going up too slow. But when it goes way past it quite a bit, like it has over the last couple of months, um, that's about, you know, it could be just a minor pullback, but usually when it does pull back, it usually goes back to that line which comes in as of today, uh, where is it? It's about 256. Uh, so you can see a pullback 256. But other than that, you know, obviously this thing's at an uptrend. And it kind of looked, over the last couple of weeks here, it looked like it kind of went par parabolic. So it may, you know, put it this way, it's gone up too fast, too quick on a short-term basis and it's due for uh, possibly a pullback. So... Uh, other than that, you know, there's no topping pattern forming yet that I see. Um, 
you know, nothing really volume-wise gives any really big clues. A lot of times you get buying climaxes right at the end. That hasn't happened here yet. You know, it's like selling climaxes. Uh, so I think it's an uptrend, but it's not a good buy. Uh, at least we get some sort of a short-term consolidation. So, and and that may work with the market. I think, you know, January is starting to look like, uh, for the markets anyhow, equity markets are kind of not looking good right now. So. Well, we want to thank you uh, for being on today, Tim. Tim uh, Ord of the Ord Dash Oracle. Remember to sell when you can, not when you have to. And we'll see you here tomorrow. Same bat channel, same bat time. All right. Thank you.